Legislating is meant to be a slow process, but in moments of crisis, you need someone who can act quickly and decisively. Believe it or not, the last time Congress actually declared war was World War II. Yes, you heard right. Congress has not authorized a single war since then. How is this possible? Well, with each administration, the executive branch finds new and let's say creative ways to sugarcoat the situation by calling it sending in humanitarian aid or advisors or drones, rather than just calling it what it oftentimes is, war. The catalyst for this norm was a little known but widely consequential event known as the Gulf of Tonkin incident. During the Vietnam War, President Lyndon Baines Johnson was under enormous pressure to end a war that he never started. He very much wanted to focus on building his great society, but that pesky situation in faraway Vietnam just kept getting in the way. At this point, US involvement was limited to just a few military advisors, but the Defense Department argued, and LBJ agreed, that they'd been half-assing it in Vietnam since the 50s, and it was time to commit, get in, and get it over with. The problem was that LBJ needed a legitimate reason to go around Congress and send in more troops. The Gulf of Tonkin incident provided it. To make a very long story short, the US military had gathered intelligence that North Vietnamese torpedo boats in the Gulf of Tonkin had engaged in an unprovoked attack on two US Navy destroyers. This was serious. It would be considered an act of war. But the intelligence was shoddy at best, and years later it was actually proven to be entirely false. Nonetheless, Johnson jumped on the opportunity. Before any of the reports had even been verified, he interrupted regular programming to report the attack to the public on live TV and request the authority from Congress to respond with force in self-defense. Congress, no less immune to the Red Scare that crippled the nation, passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which essentially gave Johnson carte blanche to take all the necessary steps to protect the country against an attack that never happened. This led to the first major escalation of troops in Vietnam and a legal justification for the open warfare that would continue for the next decade. By now, we all know about the many tragedies of Vietnam, but less discussed are the norms and the precedents established during those years that perpetuated a vicious cycle of escalation and increased executive authority that we're still grappling with today.